Sparkly for you. <laughs> did you see what's on your tie? Mm -hmm. You did? Yep. Surprise you? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Do you think Sean will cry? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think. <laughs> if you don't hit him. <laughs> you ready to do this thing? Yes, <laughs> This is growing up. Oh, baby. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Thank you, baby. Thank you, baby. Thank you, baby. 
<laughs> All right, let me see. <laughs> Tomorrow I'm going to bitch last night. I had to. I had to. <laughs> you disciplined me. <laughs> this ride. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm so happy to be included in this, Sean. Beautiful. Oh my god. You're gorgeous. <laughs> oh man. I'm crying like a sob. No. Honey, you're so gorgeous. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. You ready, honey? Uh -huh. Uh, it's been a long morning. A long morning? Yes, it has. It has been a long morning. You're not crying. Why am I crying? I'm crying. <laughs> I have a lot of makeup. Yeah. <laughs> Who would have thought after Lasix? I could cry. <laughs> I did. Oh, man. That's nice. Who gave it up? I bought it for myself. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> that's so nice. How do I look? Very nice. Oh, my God. Andre did my tie. Do it. Yeah. You feel good? I'm, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah. yeah. I'm really ready. You look gorgeous. I love it. I absolutely love, love it. it. It's a very nice dress. Oh, wow. Well, don't get rid of it. Keep it don't forever. get rid of no, it. Just kidding. <laughs> you just live here forever, yeah. right? <laughs> it's going to be ours. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. You feel better now? Yeah. I'm glad it would be the first look instead of yeah. down the aisle. That would have been terrible, but it still still could get very emotional. Oh, yes. It's definitely going to. I think that's when I'll lose it. For sure. Mm -hmm. I think I got it out. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> we did a few White Walkers. So
Taylor, you look so beautiful in your wedding dress. Sean, you look amazing in the suit that Taylor dressed you in. <laughs> I'm honored that you both asked me to officiate today. You know, when you asked me, uh, the first thing I did is went to my computer and Googled, how do I become ordained in the state of Maryland? And uh, I found the form, filled out a few blanks, you know, filled in the, the uh, few blanks, hit a couple of next buttons, and a message came up, congratulations, you've been ordained. <laughs> so I, I think I might be the first Jewish guy to be called the Rev. <laughs> <laughs> I asked Taylor and Sean um, what they wanted for their ceremony, and they told me, keep it lighthearted and keep it short. And they emphasize short. So knowing these two the way I do, I think what they meant was, let's get her done and get the party started. <laughs> or should I say continued from the shenanigans last night. <laughs> right, boys? <laughs> okay. Uh, so we are gathered here today to celebrate with Taylor and Sean as they proclaim their love and commitment to each other. They want to share their happiness and very special day with and surrounded by the people that matter most to them, all of you. Family and friends, you've watched them grow up or you grew up with them. You work with them or maybe you went to school with them. Maybe you've picked them up, you know, or helped them out of, an, of a uh, sticky situation or maybe picked them up at a bar or a party in the wee hours of the morning. I may have done that. Okay. <laughs> Taylor and Sean appreciate the fact that some of you have traveled uh, quite a distance to share and celebrate with them today. Of course, we have the Buffalo contingent, uh, but also traveled from New York City, New Jersey, Delaware, Rhode Island, Nashville, Atlanta, Florida, St. Louis, Austin, Fort Worth, Reno, San Diego, Argentina, and China. You guys, listen, I mean, can you imagine how many frequent flyer miles have been racked up for your wedding? You know, I just want to kind of get off my notes for a second. Um, just talk to Sean. I've known you for almost 11 years now, and um, we've spent a lot of time together, traveled together, um, had a lot of personal talks. And, um, you know, I feel, you know, I feel like you're a son to me and I love you. And, um, you know, there's I just thought of I've been trying to think of moments in time and you know, just, that made me smile. And I, I thought of a couple of things today. I was talking to your brother, Dan, earlier about one Christmas where we got a gift for you. <laughs> it was a fake gift. It was a box that had a picture of a coffee maker on it. And it was a coffee maker for a shower. And Sean opened it up and he said, I can't use this. I mean, how can I plug a, a, a coffee maker into the shower? And Dan and I were, we just couldn't stop laughing and because you went for it. And then, um, you know, then another thing was um, one time I, there was a snake in my garden and I go out there with a rake try to get it. You came running out with a hockey stick. <laughs> and of course, Rose was taking a video of us looking like two clowns. But, but you know, the one thing I always think about when you and I get together, whether it's traveling or, or you're coming home, I always know that I'm going to get a text or a phone call from you a few days before. Like, where are we going for dinner? <laughs> or what are we cooking for dinner? Those of you who know Sean very well know that Eating great meals is very important, <laughs> as it is to me. Anyway, so back to my notes. Um, you know, when we first, when you and I first met, you were a young college student, always searching for the next big party with your partner in crime and best man over here, uh, <laughs> Slammer. That's you. And you always found the parties, too. Uh, but, you know, I saw you graduate UB get into, uh, work through, and graduate PA school, all while integrating yourself into Brooklyn and New York City life, which was a completely different world to you. And 
I just want to say, you know, for all of us, you know, who know you, it's been such a pleasure and so gratifying to see you emerge into the fine man you are today. And uh, we're all very proud of you. Taylor? I remember the first time that we met you six years ago, or about six years ago. You and Sean picked us up at uh, the airport for a quick dinner. Well, we had a layover at, at, at BWI. And when you dropped us off that night, as soon as we got out of the car, Rose and I looked at each other, and we both said at the exact same time, Sean's going to marry her. We knew it. On behalf of Rose and I, along with Mark and Stacy, it has been such a pleasure getting to know you, your parents, and the rest of your family over the past few years. You are such a good-natured, intelligent, and caring woman. We admire the way that you so eloquently keep this guy in line. <laughs> and I know it's not an easy task. As you join together in marriage, there is an unknown future staring at you. You enter your marriage as individuals, and you will leave here today as husband and wife. You will face challenges and changes. What can never change is the commitment you made to each other. The relationship that you enter into today must be grounded with the strength of your love and faith in each other. Always listen to what the other is saying. Compromise, communicate, and most of all, respect. Remember that your love should always prevail in difficult times, especially in difficult times. You will learn, grow, and become stronger partners together. No matter what, always be each other's safety net. Taylor and Sean, as you begin your married life together, may the only division in your home be on the rare Sundays when the Ravens play the Bills. <laughs> I didn't hear you, Evan. Go Bills. All right. <laughs> May you have a life of contentment full of moments that you wish will never end. Moments where you make one another laugh and smile. A life full of happiness, good health, professional success, and to build a family. On that note, speaking for Sue, Rose, Stacy, two Marks, and myself, we want more grandchildren soon. And Evan has put in a request for some cousins. And now I would like to ask uh, Brent Hickey and uh, Aaron San Marco to come up and do a reading. Happiness in marriage is not something that just happens. A good marriage must be created. In marriage, the little things are the big things. It is never being too old to hold hands, is remembering to say I love you at least once a day. It's never going to sleep angry. It is at no time taking the other for granted. The courtship should not end at the honeymoon. It should continue through the years. It is having a mutual sense of values and common objectives. It is standing together, facing the world. It is forming a circle of love that gathers the whole family. It is doing the things for each other, not in the attitude of duty or sacrifice, but in the spirit of joy. It's speaking words of appreciation and demonstrating gratitude in thoughtful ways. It's not looking for perfection in each other. It's cultivating flexibility, patience, and understanding and a sense of humor. It's having the capacity to forgive and forget. It's giving each other an atmosphere in which each can grow old. It's having a common search for the good and the beautiful. It is establishing a relationship in which the independence is equal Dependence is mutual, and the obligation is reciprocal. It's not only marrying the right partner, it is being the right partner. Thank you, Aaron and Brent. For those of you who don't know Taylor and Sean's love story, it goes something like this. Sean originally came down to Baltimore to do an internship at Johns Hopkins for a very close friend of mine, uh, Dr. Stephen Shulman, who is here today. Uh, after Sean finished the internship, uh, he became a medical assistant at Orthopedic Associates of Central Maryland, which we will call OACM. Taylor had already been working as a medical scribe 
at OACM for six months. And I'll note that they were both working for Dr. Scott Silverstein, who was also here today. <laughs> I asked Sean to think back to the moment that he first saw Taylor in the office. What was the thought that crossed your mind? What you told me was instantly you thought how gorgeous she was. Then when you started talking to her, you realized how intelligent, put together, and calm she was. You went on to tell me <laughs> that you would find any reason in the office just to talk to Taylor. And Dr. Silverstein, I'm not sure where you are, but you really thought they were working? <laughs> <laughs> so I asked Taylor the same question. What came to mind when you first saw Sean? And what you told me was, I want to marry a guy like that. When you got home from work that evening, the first thing you did is tell your mom all about Sean. And that was six months before you started dating. Oh, Jesus. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And, 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 then, and then, when they finally talked, um, Taylor could immediately tell how Sean's gentle-hearted nature and fun-loving personality made him the kind of person that they want to be around, of course, herself included. So one Monday morning, in Sean's never-ending effort to strike up a conversation with Taylor, he asked her about her weekend, which just happened to be her birthday bash in Atlantic City. <laughs> uh, uh, so she was so excited to tell Sean that she went to a show, sat in the VIP section, and actually met Jesse McCartney. Well, Sean, not quite as in tune with pop culture at the time, thought that Taylor said that she met Jenny McCarthy, the, the blonde bombshell. So being the young buck he was, Sean, as Taylor put it, was so excited he wanted to hear more about meeting Jenny. It, it wasn't long before Taylor figured out that Sean had no idea who Jesse McCartney was. Needless to say, he was a little embarrassed, but they both had a good laugh about it. So the story continues. Sean had one of his coworkers ask Taylor if she was single and if she'd be interested in getting Sean's number. Like, you couldn't do it yourself? <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, Taylor said yes. So Sean then asked X-Ray Wendy, who still works with Sean and is also here today, <laughs> to give Taylor a post-it note with his name and number on it. Taylor had already left for the day, didn't see the note, so Sean had a terrible night that night, thinking and just walking around like, why isn't she texting me? Why isn't she texting me? So, anyway, the following week, Taylor found the note and... Uh, texted Sean, and their relationship officially began. So, Sean, again, I have to ask you, why did Taylor have to reach out first? <laughs> Soon after the note, uh, Taylor and Sean went on their first date. Uh, it started out as a drink at a sports bar. They moved on and uh, scored a couple of seats at Fachi, one of their favorite hangouts in Ellicott City. It was supposed to be a two-hour date turning into five hours of sharing food, drinks, and getting to know one another. And Sean, you told me you left there thinking about how amazing it was to have five hours go by and not even know it. And Taylor, you realized there was something special about Sean that you wanted to know more about. In Sean, you said you saw someone that shared values in family, empathy, humor, and challenge. Our soon-to-be newlyweds spent the next few months together as their love organically blossomed. Sean quickly noticed how Taylor understood him in ways that no one had before. He said that Taylor immediately got his humor and complimented his goofiness, and at the same time made him laugh and smile at the little things. Taylor knew from the start what they had was different than anything she had ever experienced. There was an immediate friendship and comfort with Sean that she felt as early as their second date which was also the first time you, be, you brought Sean home to meet your mom and dad. So I took the liberty of asking your mom and dad, you know, what they thought about Sean the first time they met him. And what they told me was he has the potential to become their favorite son-in-law. So 
for those of you who don't know, Taylor doesn't have any sisters. So, Sean, you've got that favorite son-in-law thing locked up. <laughs> Before long, they both got accepted to their respective grad schools and were facing the next phase of their relationship, long distance. Brooklyn to St. Louis. Even though it was almost three years apart, they both knew they could do it because what they had together was very special. They were committed, of course, to school and also to their future together. They had FaceTime dates, they watched movies together, and book trips to see one another during school breaks. Over one 4th of July weekend, while watching the sunset on the bay in Delaware, they forced each other into a staring contest to see who would be the first to say, I love you. Taylor knew that once again, Sean wanted her to say it first, but this time she wasn't having it. Sean caved, and um, however, you both told me separately that you knew you were in love long before that. About a year and a half ago was the big surprise proposal. Knowing what a sleuth teller is, Sean meticulously plotted every detail to make sure that the big event remained a surprise. He set the stage by planning a family trip to Florida over Thanksgiving, knowing that Taylor couldn't go. She wasn't happy about it. She didn't believe he was really going to go and actually insisted on seeing his boarding pass, which he had. <laughs> um, you couldn't understand why, Taylor, why Sean was acting so nervous that day. So Taylor reluctantly took Sean to the airport and little did she know that Amy, her maid of honor, was right behind picking Sean up at BWI. Earlier that day, Amy actually asked Taylor if she thought that Sean was going to propose anytime soon. And I think you said, eh, in about a year, right? Okay. I asked that one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, Sue and Mark had everything set up perfectly at the house. Taylor walked in. Sean was on one knee. We all watched as he proposed. Taylor was shocked, and there wasn't a dry eye in the room. Today... Taylor and Sean are well into their incredible careers, living in Ellicott City, spending their free time doing all the things they enjoy together, like cooking, playing tennis, pickleball, or should I say picking on old folks, <laughs> uh, camping, hosting parties and dinners with friends, and traveling. And a little sidebar to the traveling, Sean never leaves home without his Buffalo Bills straw hat. And Taylor never leaves home without her little stuffed animal, Cowie, who, who we've had to do a search and rescue on on a recent trip to Florida. Sorry, honey. Uh, and, and now Taylor and Sean are going to do, exchange their personal vows. Vows, please. Okay. Taylor, you'll go first. Oh. You want me to hold it? Um, I can do it. Okay. Is it? Okay, it's on. Um, a great entry there. <laughs> All right. Sean, our love started on a simple post-it note and grew far beyond what either of us could have ever imagined. You continue to love me through my endless list of pet peeves, and for that I'm forever grateful. And so are the rest of my family and friends. People always say we're the most married, unmarried couple that exists. <laughs> and that's because I've known for a long time that you are my forever. That being said, I have a few promises for you. I promise to love you unconditionally and without hesitation for today and the rest of our tomorrows. I vow to respect, honor, and trust you wholeheartedly. I promise to always celebrate alongside you in the good times and lift you up in the bad. I promise to make you smile and laugh every day, and especially on the days where it seems impossible. I promise to always stalk your location on Find My Friends when you don't answer my first call. This was put to the test at the engagement. And most importantly, I promise to challenge you to be the best version of yourself every single day. Love has nothing to do with what you're expecting to get, only with what you're expecting to give, which for me is everything. 
Our love is my safe space, from our kiss at the start of every morning to hearing you shout buns the minute you get home from work. <laughs> Each day since we met, oh, six and a half years ago, I've had the privilege to call you my best friend. But today and for the rest of my life, I get the honor to call you my husband, and I can't wait to be your wife. I love you. <laughs> Do a tissue? Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Lammy. Do I get that? Oh. Sorry. <clears throat> okay. Allergies. <laughs> <sighs> All right. <clears throat> Taylor, or as many in the audience knows you as Buns. <laughs> Through the years, we have faced obstacles, some harder than others, that have helped us build a strong foundation of our relationship. Starting with a 975 mile long distance relationship for three years, a global pandemic that seems to be never ending and a few heartbreaking Buffalo Bill losses along the way. Regardless of those obstacles we may face, I will always cherish our union and promise to love you more each day than the day before. From the moment I met you, I could tell you had the strongest, kindest, and most loving heart, and I will always admire, you, admire that about you. You always had big dreams, and I promise to support them and to walk beside you. Off, oh <clears throat> offering you courage and strength through all endeavors. <clears throat> I vow to neutralize all the spiders and house centipedes <laughs> that pose a threat. <laughs> I vow to be your travel partner, whether it's laying on the beach for 12 hours or hiking our national parks. No matter what time of year, day, night, no holiday matters, I promise to keep the Grinch in consideration of our movie selection. <laughs> I promise I will always laugh at your white chicks references and to forever be your oldies but goodies singing partner. I promise to challenge you and encourage you no matter what side of the pickleball court you're on. I promise to put you first, except some Sundays in the fall from 1 to 4 p.m. Go Bills. I will be your forever late night Froyo partner and your weekend morning Call of Duty buddy. I promise to kiss you good morning and to kiss you good night. I promise to always trust and respect you, laugh with you, cry with you, and to celebrate the joys of life with you. I will love you faithfully through good times and bad. I will forever be proud to be your husband and your best friend. Taylor, from this day forward, I give you my hand, my heart, and all my love as long as we both shall live. I am forever lucky and grateful to have you as my partner in life and my one true love. I love you. Thanks, Lynn. Oh, God damn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Okay, we okay? Yeah. All right. Beautiful. <laughs> Wedding rings are a symbol of commitment and love. They represent what has been and what will always be. These rings will remind Taylor and Sean of this day, every day, for the rest of their lives. Rings, please. Sean, you'll go first. Please place the ring on Taylor's finger. Sean, do you take Taylor to be your wife, to have and to hold from this day forward for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do you part. I do. Taylor, it's your turn. Please place the ring on Sean's finger. Taylor, do you take Sean to be your husband? Okay, we'll start. We'll start it over. That's okay. <laughs> We're not in the medical field. <laughs> okay. You want some help? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. There we, no. He's got it. No. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Do you take Sean to be your husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better or for worse, for richer and for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish? Till death do you part. I do. 
Taylor and Sean, you have come here today of your own free will. In the presence of your family and friends have declared your love and commitment to each other. You've kissed a thousand times before, but this one is different. So without further ado, by the power vested in me by both the state of Maryland and by the Bills Mafia, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Now you may kiss. Fam okay. Family and friends, it, it is my pleasure to present to you for the first time, Mr. and Mrs. Sean McGivern.
Love you. Both. All right, Brendan. Let's do shot. And all right to our bride and groom. Mark and I would like to thank everybody who traveled near and far for Sean and Taylor, and especially my niece who came from China, Heather and Ryan, and Marcella from Argentina. We appreciate that. <laughs> Taylor, here's the day you've always dreamed of. Me too, but I didn't know it would come quite this fast. Since I can remember, you've watched Cake Boss say yes to the dress, keeping up with the Kardashians, and the Real Housewives of every county and state. You have no idea how proud you and that Dad and I are of you. You've turned into such a beautiful young lady, succeeding in college and successful career. We are especially proud of your new life and marriage to Sean. Sean, we knew you were something special when Taylor brought you in to meet us after only two dates and you joined us on our family vacation in California. Two months later, we said, this is really serious. We have grown to love you like a son and quickly realized that you don't need to be called twice to dinner. <laughs> we welcome you, your parents, and family with open arms. These two are truly suited for each other. We are so glad Taylor found the post-it note on the purse. Thanks to Ashley and Wendy, Operation June, was a huge success. We wish you both a lifetime of happiness, laughter, and a love that only continues to grow with each wonderful year you two are together. We'd also welcome grandchildren. <laughs> Arms too. Again, thank you for coming. Cheers. making sure that even in times of hardship, the ones that she loves have everything they need. This past December, Taylor came home from work very excited to show me the decorations she had bought for her beloved Aunt Janet's rehab room, knowing that if she couldn't be home for Christmas, that she was going to make damn sure Aunt Janet knew how loved and missed she was. And that's the kind of love that Taylor brings to every relationship she forms. 
She sent me handcrafted gifts for every milestone throughout medical school so that I knew she was proud of me. When two weeks would go by without hearing from me, she quickly humbled me by sending a text that usually said something like, missing you, beautiful, and would attach the ugliest photo she could find of me during my awkward and larger preteen years. <laughs> She's goofy, fun, personable, and lighthearted. So when Taylor and Sean met, uh, first started dating in 2016, I was living in Africa, and with the time change and poor internet, I was a little out of the loop on what was unfolding here in Ellicott City. And we FaceTimed in February so she could catch me up and started telling me all about the handsome guy at work um, that she had gone on a few dates with. <laughs> she started with, yeah, we went on our first date. It was incredible. We talked for hours, kind of the exact same thing Jeff said. Um, and then we went on our second date and he met my parents. And I was like, wait, what? No, no one gets to meet your parents. Uh, and she goes, yeah, and then next month, he's going to come meet me, me and dad up. And I was like, hold on. You've known this guy for two months, and he literally gets to meet the king and queen. And even though he was, I wasn't there, and I hadn't met Sean yet, I already knew. And it wasn't long after that, I began to see a tall, handsome, and very smiley Sean all over Taylor's social media with an equally smiley and happy Taylor. So fast forward a few months, I came home to the US for a short trip and had the opportunity to meet Sean, who happened to be visiting. It was the middle of the week and Taylor was at work, but I had to get to the airport to fly back to Uganda, so I needed to meet him early. Taylor was equally as excited for me to meet Sean and said, don't worry, he'll be up. He'll definitely be up by 7.30. Just go ring the doorbell. And with coffee in hand, super smiley, excited to meet my best friend's boyfriend, Sean opens the door in his boxers. <laughs> Waking up from a sleep he clearly had no intention waking up from. And yet he welcomed me in and was instantly the warm and personal person we all know him to be. So at many of the weddings I have been to, I hear the speaker talk about how they know the bride or groom really well and look forward to getting to know the other in the coming years. This is not the case for Taylor, Sean, and I. I am extremely fortunate to be able to call Sean a good friend. This timeline may have been accelerated after Sean and Taylor moved into my childhood home for a few months and have been squatting there for the past two and a half years. But I have personally loved every conversation, dinner, movie, the three of us have been able to share and importantly have witnessed firsthand the love these two have for each other. And Jeff, no, you are not the only person he texts about what are we gonna have for dinner when you get home? <laughs> Sean is loving, uh, is fun loving, caring, thoughtful, and importantly, patient. He loves Taylor for who she is, quirks and all, and there are a lot of them, <laughs> and approaches every life milestone um, they have shared thoughtfully with love, and again, a lot of patience. When Sean called months before he planned to propose to Taylor, I was of course ecstatic, excited to gain an unofficial brother, one that wouldn't beat me up. Um, <laughs> And he detailed his plan, which entailed him pretending to go to Florida for Thanksgiving to spend time with uh, Rose and Jeff. But secretly, they were also going to be in Maryland for the proposal. Taylor was going to drop him at the airport and I would follow behind and scoop him up um, and get him back to the house before she got there. In the months leading up to this magical day, Sean asked, do you think I need to buy a real plane ticket? I said no, thinking there's no way Taylor would be on to us. Sean decided to do it anyway, and this is when I learned that Sean officially knew Taylor better than I did. <laughs> and that Taylor is a little nuts. <laughs> the day of the proposal, Taylor and I got our nails done, if that was not hint enough. And she looked at me and said, I really thought he might surprise me and stay, but I saw his plane ticket. Maybe we can be together next year for Thanksgiving. So Sean, you were spot on. So now, even though Taylor and I have been friends for our entire lives, if you asked six-year-old me if I would be giving a speech at Taylor's wedding one day, I would have said no. And not because I didn't think I would be here. Driving home from preschool one day, our neighbor, Chris Fisher, proclaimed that he was going to marry Taylor. <laughs> I naturally got super possessive and yelled, no, you're not, you can't. I'm her best friend and I'm going to marry her. Sean, if there's anyone that six-year-old me would be okay with marrying Taylor, it's you. Thank you for loving my best friend unconditionally. 
I ask you all to raise a glass to the McGiverns. I wish you both a lifetime of happiness and may each day be full of love and laughter. to echo Amy's thoughts and just thank the parents of the bride and the groom for such a beautiful weekend so far and a gorgeous ceremony and reception today. For those who don't know me, uh, I'm Dan. I'm Sean's best man. Uh, Sean and I met when we were seven years old. We saw each other every day and most weekends until we graduated high school. We lived together when we went to the University of Buffalo and then we lived together again when we were doing our grad programs in Brooklyn. And so after a quarter century of friendship, Sean, I'm truly honored standing here today that you still introduced me as your old roommate, like a guy who answered a Craigslist ad? <laughs> really, Sean? But now I, I, I'm the best man. That's water under the bridge, Sean. I, I know we're not prone to compliments. And as part of the promotion from old roommate to best man, I sat down and reflected on our friendship and I put pen to paper on the memories we've made together. And as I was writing things out, I realized the list could be endless. I mean, after all, Sean is the most fun friend, fun friend you could have. Uh, he's always proposing the next trip to take, the next concert to go see, or the next place to just go grab a bite to eat. And Taylor, I know that Sean's fun loving nature is just one of the many reasons that you decided to marry him. And standing here today, I really can't tell you anything about Sean that you haven't already figured out for yourself. But as I was writing out my list, there was something interesting that I wanted to share. And that was that a lot of the things that I had listed as good memories didn't really look that fun on paper. <laughs> like one of the memories I had was broken car radio. <laughs> and that doesn't sound fun at all. And that was the same thing I was thinking a few years back when we hopped in the car in Baltimore to drive back to Buffalo and Sean casually mentioned, oh yeah, the radio's out of commission. <laughs> Now, I was less than enthused thinking that for the seven-hour drive, we would need a little more entertainment considering we'd heard all of each other's stories. But it made my list because by the time we got to Buffalo, Sean had me laughing for the better part of the ride with stories that he'd apparently been saving for a rainy day. <laughs> and now, uh, another thing I had on the list was Red Rocks concert. And that actually sounds fun until, you know, I, I mentioned that this was a concert that was canceled. <laughs> Sean and I were planning to have a great time, flew out to Denver back in May of 2017. It was 70 degrees when we got there, but a surprise snowstorm put a kibosh on our chance at, you know, this legendary music venue. But it made the list because Sean floated the idea of going skiing. We borrowed some gear from friends, drove up into the mountains, and had a fun time in the snow that ruined our original plans. And like I said, the list goes on forever, but the last one that I wanted to share... Uh, that I had written down was moving apartments in New York City, which is the quintessential idea of a fun time. <laughs> and it was certainly memorable. The day started out with a phone call from U-Haul letting us know the truck we reserved had been stolen. <laughs> Last day of the lease, they're kicking us out. Sean is frantically on the phone with U-Haul customer service, and he gets a backup. Awesome. We're moving out. We get to the U-Haul lot and we realize why this truck was available. It was the largest truck they had available in Brooklyn, three times the size of what we needed, and treacherous to drive on any city streets. But Sean bravely volunteered to drive. And now, uh, unlike the past two stories, this actually doesn't get fun for Sean because immediately after we turned out of the parking lot, we sideswiped a shiny brand new Corvette. <laughs> there could not have been a more perfect car to hit. But the fun here was for me, because I got to watch Sean break the news to the Corvette's owner, a large, aggressive gentleman from Staten Island who looked like he had been rejected from the casting for The Sopranos. <laughs> now, Sean kept it civil. We exchanged information, and we got out of there with just enough time 
before we were kicked out of our apartments. And Sean was able to laugh about it later. And maybe that's because he had the proper insurance coverage. But I have a bigger takeaway from that and the other stories. And that's that it takes a remarkable friend to take broken car radios, canceled concerts, and U-Haul fender benders and turn them into memories that you can look back together and laugh about. And Sean is that remarkable friend. And when things go sideways and plans fall apart, there is no one I would rather have by my side than Sean. He never takes himself too seriously. He has a positive attitude that is contagious to other people around him. And most importantly, he's always thinking about the people he loves and looking after them. And in that regard, Taylor, he could not have found a better match in you. I've only had the pleasure of knowing you for a fraction of the time that I've known Sean, but it's clear that you're always doing things to make the people in your life feel special. And so, as we're all gathered here today and we're watching you officially decide to spend the rest of your lives together, I'm overjoyed because I know that as a team, you two will always go above and beyond to take care of each other. And that whether things are good or bad or going completely unplanned, you two will be making memories that are going to make your list 50, 60, 70 years from today. And so with that, I'd like to raise a glass and toast to Sean and Taylor, making a lifetime of memories.
Sorry.